Fringe feathers help this ghostly bird fly silently through the sky and ride down onto their unsuspecting prey. This is going great so far. <laughs> Unlike their birds of a feather, these milk white beauties hunt during the day as well as at night. Oh, cool, 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 oh, cool, cool. There he goes. This is the snowy owl. Oh, 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 a little lower, a little lower. Oh, 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 as low as I can go. Hi, my name is Aranya, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Today we're talking about the snowy owls. The snowy owl is one of the greatest northern birds of prey, but there are a lot of other winter specialists. We filmed the most amazing of them and made an hour-long documentary where we explore the evolutionary adaptations of the astonishing animals who live in the Arctic and subarctic. One of them is the ptarmigan. This bird looks like a quail during the summer, but undergoes a dramatic transformation in the winter. Their plumage changes, their feet and legs grow small, fur-like feathers, and their toes turn into snowshoes. You can learn more about them by streaming Strange Creatures of the Arctic right now, as well as over 3,000 other documentaries on Magellan TV. Plus, Animal Logic viewers get a one-month free trial by clicking on the link in the description. And after you're done, keep watching Magellan TV for more amazing shows with new documentaries being added every week. Thanks, Magellan TV! So where we are right now, it's in the middle of very nice open fields, lots of green space. And because of that, I actually hear a lot of other birds around too. There's an oriole singing in the trees. There's some swallows by the nest boxes out there. Maybe a couple of raptors flying around too. We are now on our way to meet the snowy owl, which I haven't seen in months. <laughs> Bubo scandiacus, aka the snowy owl, is the heaviest owl in North America, though we birders lovingly refer to them as just snowies. Snowies are big birds, and they can weigh up to two kilograms, which is a lot for a bird. They stand half a meter tall and have a wingspan of up to 1.5 meters, making them one of the largest owl species in the world. The snowy owl is a circumpolar species, which means it mainly lives way up north in the Arctic tundra of North America, Europe, and Asia. They like to live in flat open terrain, like the tundra, prairies, or anywhere else with large swaths of open hunting ground. Snowy owls have the same travel patterns as snowbirds, the name for retirees who fly south for the winter and return back north in the summer. But not all of them migrate, and some choose to tough it out in the Arctic all year round and they dominate the high Arctic skies as the largest avian predator. Which basically makes them the Ice King's blue zombie dragon from Game of Thrones. Except they're alive. And owls. The snowy owl's white feathers give it the perfect camouflage in winter, an advantage they lose in the summer when the snow melts. Adult females and juveniles are slightly darker in color and sport more dark brown flecks compared to the purer white adult males. To stay warm, snowy owls are swaddled in feathers from beak to talon. A downy layer of insulation is covered in thick feathers, which blankets their toes and even beaks to keep them toasty in frigid winter temperatures. Even when the air around them is negative 50 degrees Celsius, their pretty white parkas help them stay a balmy internal 38 degrees. To complete the ensemble, they have luminous eyes. These massive eyes give them excellent vision, but also make their faces quite expressive. Snowy owls have got two looks, pissed and shocked. Like most owls, the structure of their feathers is responsible for the snowy owl's ability to fly almost silently. While other birds make a loud flap when they fly, caused by the air turbulence their wings create, the specialized feathers of the snowy owl allow it to silently approach its prey from above. First, the serrated leading edges of the feathers break up the airflow. Then, as the air travels along the wing to the trailing edge, fringed feathers further reduce the air disturbance. 
finally, the soft downy feathers of the underside of the wings and legs absorb any additional noise. It's a perfect combination that enables the snowy owls to permanently operate in stealth mode. Snowy owls aren't particular about what they eat and will hunt mammals, birds, and sometimes even fish if they're spending time near the coast. But the snowy owl's favorite snack? A nice, juicy lemming. They can eat up to 1,600 lemmings a year. When life gives you lemmings, make lemmingade. They eat so many lemmings that sometimes they will morbidly line their nests with lemming fur to keep their chicks warm. Snowy owls are opportunistic hunters. Most of the time they catch their prey by sitting on a perch and waiting. They're equipped with excellent vision and even better hearing. So if their target is moving under the snow, they can still hear it. When snowy owls hunt from the air, they generally cruise low to the ground. They're fast flyers and can reach speeds of 80 kilometers an hour. And with their specialized feathers, they cover this ground silently. Once they spot lunch, the snowy owl quickly and quietly goes right in for the kill, snatching their prey with their sharp talons. Like many other birds of prey, the snowy owl likes to eat small prey whole. Their strong stomach juices digest the prey's flesh, while the indigestible parts like teeth, bones, fur, and feathers get packed together into little pellets that the owl regurgitates 18 to 24 hours after feeding. So cute. A snowy owl needs to eat about 10 rodents a day to meet its nutritional needs. Luckily, their hunting success rate is about 45%. Those are pretty good odds. The availability of lemmings can often directly impact the snowy owl's ability to nest, with them sometimes foregoing breeding entirely if their prey is scarce. If they do breed, the male will bring the female a lemming snack. It's the snowy equivalent of chocolate-covered strawberries. After breeding, the female will make a depression, called a scrape, directly in the tundra to lay her eggs. The more abundant the lemmings that year, the more eggs she will lay. The male will then continue to feed her as she remains atop the eggs for about a month. Once they hatch, Papa Owl continues to bring food to both Mama Owl and their owlets. At around seven weeks old, the hatchlings are ready to fly, but Mom and Dad continue to feed them until they're around 10 weeks old. When they're not breeding in the spring, they like to chill out all on their own. Like most loners, snowy owls are the shy, silent, mysterious types. Unless somebody trespasses onto their territory or nest. And that's when the snowy owls go into attack mode, hissing, screeching, clapping their beaks, dive bombing, even striking their intruders. <laughs> We get it, you like your space. Unlike most owls, snowy owls aren't nocturnal. They prefer being active during the day, especially in the summer. They really do have no choice though in the Arctic when the days are 24 hours long. While they usually spend most of their lives in the Arctic, certain conditions, like a strong breeding season, can pull them out of their usual tundra territory and push them further south, causing a snowy owl invasion, known as an eruption. That's eruption with an I, not an E. During the 2013-2014 snowy owl eruption, individuals were spotted as far south as Florida. Imagine being able to see a flamingo and a snowy owl in the wild on the same day. Talk about a birder's dream. But seeing snowy owls in the wild is becoming harder and harder. For more on that, we have a very special correspondent reporting to us live from Alaska. Take it away, Danielle. All right, this is day two at the Kroshal Wildlife Park. And we're here with Steve Kroshal, and he's going to give me an introduction to Ookpik, the snowy owl. Yesterday we tried to make an acquaintance, but he was a little bit shy. So now that he knows my scent and what I look like from yesterday, maybe day two he'll be a little bit more open to spending some time with us. Do you think that owl, snowy owls can smell? Hmm. I'm not I sure. Wonder. I wonder. It's a big question. I keep asking everybody. I know they can hear really well and see really well, but I'm not sure how much scent would would matter to them. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna gonna talk now because he's right in the cabin. All right. And, that, and, and remember that. Oh. Ooh. 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 Little lower. Little lower. Ooh. 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 Okay. That's as low good. as I can go. Okay, so I'm open the door. Ooh. That's Ookpik. Ooh. 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 Ookpik is looking a little more comfortable this time. Ooh. I'm gonna stay back here until he retrieves him because entering an enclosed space with an owl who's not familiar with me might make it uncomfortable. There's only so. a few birds in the world that have feathers instead of scales. Yeah. But an interesting thing about the scales on a bird's feet is that they're actually adapted feathers. So this is the original form that birds evolved before developing scaly feet. So this is actually an ancestral condition. This is going great so far. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Oh. That's good. Oh. Probably basic. Come with me, Danelle. You're going to walk right alongside. And we're going to walk over here to the snow and we're going to try to get him on a uh, uh, a little mound there so we can talk more about snowy owls. All right. Have you ever touched a snowy owl before? I haven't. Are you sure he's okay with this? I think so. We're going to find out just right, right. there. All right. Oh, they just talk like this. Oh, oh you're oh, so oh, soft. Oh, go, go, go. Yeah, that's it. A... Aren't you just a beautiful bird? Yes. Hey. The snowy owl's name is Ookpik, which is Inupiaq for snowy owl. Pretty self-descriptive. Snowy owls are the poster birds of the Arctic. Yet despite this, snowy owls are disappearing across their range. Getting this close to a snowy owl is something extremely special. There's only about 30 to 40,000 left of these animals in the world. Snowy owls are listed as vulnerable, and every year, their populations decrease. Being taken care of this well in captivity, they can live up to 35 years, which is a long time for a bird. Out in the wild, they can live maybe 10 years at best. In the warm months, snowy owls return to their preferred breeding grounds north of the tree line. In winter, they travel great distances in search of food, preferring flat areas like prairies, fields, marshes, dunes, beaches, and even airport tarmacs. Snowy owls on runways are dangerous for everyone involved because sometimes they will collide with aircrafts. Their attraction to airport tarmacs has led conservationists to trapping and releasing snowy owls far away from the dangers of plane engines. Project SOAR, the Snowy Owl Airport Rescue, is a volunteer organization that does this important work along with rescuing and relocating other species of owls and raptors. Hopefully, as more projects like these take off, we'll see a return of the Arctic's best bird. Awesome. Did you get that? <laughs> Just ruffling your feathers. I'm sorry, did I offend you? Back to you, Aranya. Thanks, Danielle. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights. I'll see you later. What is their favorite food? Is it voles? Yeah, voles and uh, le, le, lem, 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 lemmings. Lemmings, right. They love lemmings. Lemmings. Do you, you know like lemmings? lemmings?